What's up guys, Tugi here, back again with some more NHL 17 in my Columbus Blue Jackets franchise mode. And in this episode, this team hopefully changes for the better, at least long term. Obviously, this is the team right now. It's not great. We were we were really handcuffed this season with the rules and guidelines that we set. And I was thinking about that, you know, a little bit before recording this, but Bottom line is, this first season, it was down to simply, can this team, our starting team, aside from Holden and Elias Lindholm, can we find success with those players? And the answer was no. So in this episode, of course, we have the trading blocks completely open. Any player's good to go. Um, obviously, there are some players we won't be getting rid of. Saad, Jenner, Atkinson are all staying. Hartnell, Dubinsky, Felino, they can all go, but we do need to get offers for them if we want them to go in this uh, in this trade window here before the trade deadline. William Carlson, I'm not sure. I think we might hold on to him. Wenberg staying, Lindholm staying. Clarkson, Stoll, Bernier. Pretty much everybody can go. Jack Johnson could go. Uh, even Sergei Bobrovsky. It's just a matter of whether or not we get the offers for a lot of these players. So what we are going to do is we are going to sim up now to the actual trade deadline. We will see if we get any offers here in these next nine days for any of those normal players. And then come trade deadline day, I'll make any moves that I care to make to get rid of certain people. We might try to keep the monsters competitive, but as for the Blue Jackets, I believe we're nine points out of a wild card spot with 24 games left. I don't like our chances, but let's see what happens here. Let's see if we get any trade offers. We have arrived. It is March 1st. It is trade deadline day. And unfortunately, things are not going too well, losing two out of our last three. And of course, as you know, we've really had no trade offers. The only trade offers we've had are for the likes of Ryan Murray, Seth Jones, and Alex Wenberg, who aren't going anywhere. So from the looks of it, this team is pretty much intact for the rest of the year. We are, I believe, eight points out of a playoff spot at best. And I I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. There really isn't too much we can do. Any of the players I want to get rid of, because of the rules we put in place, I can't get rid of them because of their contracts, and at least until the end of this year. So unfortunately, someone like Scott Hartnell is going to continue to plummet in overall. David Clarkson staying until we see how much salary cap we'd have to hold on to or how much salary cap we'd have to retain to get rid of him. It's a mess right now. It would be nice if we could sneak out a playoff uh, berth. Seth Jones, by the way, has gone up to an 88, which is great for us. But overall, the big changes are going to have to come in this first offseason. Like I said, they could be as big as getting rid of Bobrovsky and having Corpy Salo be the man in goal. So we are going to sim the rest of this episode, and we will see. Oh, by the way, Cliche accepted the offer. So these are the lines right now down in Cleveland. We will sim and see how the rest of this season goes. I don't expect anything, but who knows? Maybe out of nowhere we will catch fire and we'll be able to make the playoffs. So let's find out. We will sim the entire month of March, we will go to April 1st. A couple of back-to-backs here in this month, so Corpi Sala will get some time. We will see how he can do. Let's see if the Blue Jackets can pull off a miracle and find themselves in playoff contention down the stretch. The month of March was yet another up-and-down month, and unfortunately, with our 3-2 loss against the Blackhawks on the final Day of that month, it is official. We are not a playoff team. We have a 30, 35, and 12 record with five games left, and we are out of the race. The Lake Erie Monsters turned it around. We unfortunately did not, and it's kind of embarrassing because we were pretty much even with Pittsburgh, or at least close to Pittsburgh, and they've stormed back, and they're in a playoff spot, so it is... You know, it, it definitely puts you, you know, despite having some good pieces, definitely uh, it's a reality check that we are a long way away with this team from being true contenders. I'm not sure where we rank in the NHL right now. 
we are a lottery team in a very big way. Buffalo and Toronto really battling it out right now for the highest odds to number one overall pick. But we are right there. And now that I know this, I'm going to bring up some of the youth and we are going to try and tank for the rest of the way there. We do have a big help in that already. Seth Jones is out for the rest of the year with a shoulder injury. But overall, pretty disappointing. Scott Hartnell, I've put him on the second line. I've had him on the third line. He just continues to plummet in overall. He has had a, just an absolutely horrific year. Complains about ice time. I put him on the second line. He still complains about ice time. I mean, it's just been absolutely brutal. But let me change this lineup over. We're going to get some of the kids in here and probably stock up the AHL to still have them be competitive. But Sonny Milano, Bjorkstrand, Stenlin, Mutri are guys that very well could get some playing time with the uh, with the Blue Jackets, with the Columbus Blue Jackets, in their last few games before they move. So here we go for the last five games of this season. Here are the lines we are rolling with. The top six is still the same, but it is now Sonny Milano, Wenberg, and Bjorkstrand on the third line. Mutri, William Carlson, and David Clarkson on the fourth line. The defense, it is Jack Johnson with David Savard, Nick Holden with Ryan Murray, and then Dylan Hetherington with Scott Harrington. Your goalie is Eunice Corpisalo. Our one scratched player is Scott Hartnell. He can go fuck himself. The AHL right now, it's still shaping up to be a competitive team. It's going to be Heatley, Stenland, and Bernier as the top line. Bittner is in there with Chip Chur and Moss, and then a bunch of other veterans mixed in on the bottom Six, the defense, it's Stuart Golubev, Harold Griba, and then Carlson and Dougherty will get in to the lineup. The goaltender is still going to be Elvis Merz-Likens, I believe. He actually hasn't been too great, so we'll give it to Anton Forsberg. Why not? I don't know if either of them are really going to make the NHL. I mean, low fringe starter, that's a huge question mark moving forward. But right now we'll give it to Forsberg, see what he can do. And if he struggles in the Monsters' last few games, we'll give it back to Mars Likens before the playoffs begin. We will give Bobrovsky the last game of the year against the Toronto Maple Leafs. But until then, we will sim these last four games. And of course, Eric Riva immediately gets hurt. So that'll put in Eminger or Mark Kondari. And let's see, the scouting, the scouting, the scouting. We finished scouting the CHL. I'm just taking care of the United States. We'll actually sit in the defense for one week. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do for all of Europe is just one week at a time. Try to get at least a little bit of info on everybody possible. I'm not going to worry about getting Griba back into the lineup. We have won two straight games. Now three straight games with this new lineup. That is hilarious. Can we make it four? And we do. Four wins out of our last five guaranteed against at least Philly and Washington, who are both playoff teams. That is absolutely hilarious. And go figure, right? Let's see. The owner goal here be within 1 million of the player salary budget I set at 69.528. I think we're there. I'm not sure. I don't really care because we can't be fired. So who gives a shit? Let's, uh, let's get Bobrovsky in here for this last game. And I actually want to check. Sonny Milano, I think he went up an overall point. He only has a goal. Bjorkstrand definitely went up. He has an assist. How is Nick Mutri doing? He has a point as well. But let's actually, you know what? I want to check on the D as well. Dylan, uh, uh, Dylan Hetherington, no points yet. Scott Harrington, no points yet. But neither of them are minus players. So go figure. I almost feel like we have outperformed the normal team. Eunice Corpusala finishes with 30 games played in a 9.29. Needless to say, Sergei Bobrovsky could very well be traded in this upcoming offseason. I have no reason to really hold on to him. He's underperforming, much like he has been in real life, or at least through last season, where he was abysmal for the Blue Jackets and got his coach fired. I'm not going to worry about the scouting. We win four out of our last five games, and maybe I should have taken care of the scouting. We'll miss a couple of days. The NHL regular season is over. As expected, a good job for us by 
missing the playoffs. Allow me to sim to the end of the postseason, though, and we will take a look at the final playoff bracket. Actually, we just could have looked at that right there. But we will look at the completed playoff tree. The Tampa Bay Lightning are apparently the favorite, apparently. But regardless, they have the playoff bracket. We will see who wins the Stanley Cup, and we'll, of course, take a look at our stats for our team and the NHL, see who wins the awards, and that'll wrap up a very disappointing Season 1. Season 1 has come to a close, and it wasn't exactly the most exciting result that we could have had. The Chicago Blackhawks are once again your Stanley Cup champions, beating the Montreal Canadiens in five games, and that's uh, it was a surprising Final Four. Chicago outlasts LA in seven. Montreal outlasts Washington in seven. Montreal beat Ottawa in five and then swept New Jersey to get there. Same result for Chicago, sweeping Dallas and then outlasting or making quick work of Dallas in five games. In the AHL, didn't go too well for the Monsters. We were swept in the first round by the Milwaukee Admirals. And in the end, the Toronto Marlies won the Calder Cup in seven games over the San Diego Gulls, of course, the Anaheim Ducks minor league affiliate. But there you have it. Tampa Bay won the President's Trophy. That would be why they were the favorites. But in the end, the Hawks win it again. Their third cup in that listing. That is unreal. Looking at the player awards, the Art Ross Trophy goes to Stamkos, as does the Hart. The Norris winner is Eric Carlson for the second time in three years. The Lady Bing to Tyler Sagan, the Calder Memorial Trophy to Rantanen of the Colorado Avalanche. The Con Smythe went to Corey Crawford. The Vezina went to Craig Anderson. A little bit surprising. Crawford takes home the Jennings Award. The Masterton to Adam McQuaid, the only hardware the Bruins probably had a chance at winning in the sim. Jordan Stahl takes home the Selkie Trophy because he's still overrated in this game. Come at me, Hurricanes fans. Stamkos takes home the Ted Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard goes to Alex Ovechkin. Down in the AHL, we'll take a look to see if we took home any hardware. Patrick Line takes home the uh, most points trophy, the John B. Sollenberger Award. He gets another bit of hardware as the league MVP. He scored the most goals. He was the most outstanding rookie. Holy shit. Anthony D'Angelo. For the Tucson Roadrunners, one defenseman of the year, two years in a row that an offensive defenseman ended up taking home that award. Dan Ellis was the goalie of the year. Bebo gets a little bit of hardware. Line A, another bit of hardware. Adam Pellick gets a little bit as well. And then Dustin Tokarski rounds out those awards. And yeah, let's just quickly take a look at what our team did this season. And we have a ton of major changes coming in the next episode. Danny Heatley led our team in points, 57 points in all. Uh, he played all 76 games. David Moss did all right as well, just behind him. Of course, it was a constantly rotating lineup. Bjorkstrand didn't have too bad of a year. I'm hoping he'll make the NHL in the next season, but I'll let you guys get a look at everybody else there. Jack Dougherty got some games in. Carlson got some games in as well this year due to injury. And the goaltending, it was Merz Likens and Forsberg. Neither finished with too ideal of a uh, save percentage there. Merz Likens definitely had quite a few more games. Oscar Donsk got one game, and he did not do too much with it. I'll quickly take a look at the point totals here in the AHL. Why not? Although we already know that Patrick Laine just absolutely cleaned up. The best goalie in the AHL was Dan Ellis, as we know. And, of course, we won't be too close on that. And then the point total. Patrick Line, 83 points. Nick Patan was there. Derek Roy was third. We had him at one point, and he ended up getting claimed on waivers. Kirby Reichel was up there as well. Alex Nylander for the Rochester Americans. In the NHL right now, or for this season, I should say, Cam Atkinson, despite missing eight games, was our leading scorer. I won't go through all of these stats. I'll just let you guys take a look, and we will scroll 
all the way down to the bottom where, you know, a couple of guys had some games and didn't get any points. It was a very rough season for Columbus, but things are looking up because if we have, because Jesus, that's not English. We, of course, are moving to QC at the beginning of the next season. Stamkos just outlasted Sagan for the, uh, for the lead there. But yeah, guys, that'll pretty much do it. No need for this episode to go any further or any longer than it has. The Chicago Blackhawks are your Stanley Cup champions. The Marlies win the Calder Cup, and we cannot escape Columbus soon enough. But yeah, as always, guys, if you did enjoy this episode, make sure to hit that like button to help support the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series. And I will see you guys in the next episode where we go through the draft the entire offseason. And we move to QC. It's a fresh start that this team desperately needs.